Welcome back, Chicago Bears Nation. My name is Nick Rohde, and welcome to Just Another Year Chicago Bears Podcast. Today, it is Friday, and it is Happy Hour Friday. Grab your drink, and because we have a very special guest that's going to cheers with us today. We have former Super Bowl champion and Chicago Bears offensive lineman Keith Van Horn joining us. Keith, welcome to the show. Hey, Nick. How you doing? Thanks for having me. And thank you for coming on, because it's it's an exciting time to be a Bears fan, especially being a former USC fan and player, because it sounds like we're taking a guy from there this year. Yeah, let me. My computer is playing with. There we go. Yeah, um, it does sound like that. Uh, we'll see what happens, um, but it, everything seems to be pointing that way. Um, you know, there's there's so many options there, and, and the three. And we'll get into it. The three needs we that we our team needs. There's plenty of choices so there is and just like choices we got a couple drinks with us today so keith what do you got we got both freshy organic tequila seltzer that is today's sponsor and we're really excited to get things let's see if you can see it block the light a little bit it's authentic authentic tequila same tequila that's in your freshy Yes, sir. So shall we take a swig? Yeah, I'll go with the tequila. You, you do your freshie. All right. Well, cheers, cheers, everybody. Let's hear it in the live chat right now. Cheers, cheers to the Chicago and, Bears. Here's to the draft. Yes, sir. And we got the live chat going today, Keith. We got a ton of people already tuned in. We got Frank tuned in saying F Green Bay. We got Mike saying, what's up? We got another F Green Bay. We got a lot of F Green Bays right now, guys. Well, that's, so, good. that's good. That's what you should say about Green Bay. That's right. <laughs> Keep them going in the live chat, guys. We'll be uh, throwing up questions on the live screen uh, for Keith and myself to answer. But as before we begin, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all Chicago Bears news. So, Keith, let's kick things off today with our main topics. and. I think, you know, the, obviously the big one is talking about the offseason as a whole. Uh, it's been a huge offseason for the Bears. They spent in a lot of different areas. They brought in a lot of different players. But out of all the moves that Ryan Poles has made so far, what is one of your favorites? Well, um, <laughs> getting rid of Cody was one thing. <laughs> you know, he had a, he, he served us well for, for a few years there, but uh, we need a center, but uh, they're, you know, bring in, uh, what's his name? Keenan. Did I get that right? You're going to have to help me with names. Uh, uh, yes. Cameron Shelton. Yeah, that'll help. Um, that's good. I, I don't know about these linemen that they got in yet. I, you know, I just don't know enough about them. Um, but, uh, and the running back, you know, he, I don't know about, how, you know, spending wise, but we need them and we can get into the wide receivers having the two wide receivers we have now. Bringing in a new young kid from in the first round would be great to have him underneath them because these other, those guys are you know the one especially the guy we signed is he's getting up there so I don't know we'll see what happens but um, I like that he builds through the draft though uh, he said that from the get go when he got here and that's exactly how you have to build your team um, the the core of your team has to come through your draft and you got to be able to hit your on your draft picks and he's done pretty well so far. And in regards to building through the draft, obviously, Cale Williams is coming out of USC and, you know, he has a couple other teammates building through the draft. Is there anyone else out of USC that you've seen this past year that you think would benefit the Chicago Bears? <laughs> God, you put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I, I honestly couldn't tell you that. Um, I, I don't know enough of the, of the players that are there um, and who's even, uh, you know, who's, who's uh, committed to the draft. So. That sound, I know that's terrible as a, an alumni, but uh, I, I don't. But um, there's certainly plenty of guys in that first those first ten picks that uh, could help us out. And I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a move on the not, number nine pick. I, you know, we need we need vo- multiple things, so we don't have multiple picks. So other than in, in the first round, but we'll see what happens. So just before we get into a little bit about your draft night experience, are you, so you're open to trading back the number nine pick. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Um, I am. Um, unless there's, I mean, unless there's a guy that you just, you know, as uh, you have rated ranked up there where you got to have them, you can't pass on them. And we need a pat, we need a edge rusher. We need an offensive lineman. 
a tackle. Uh, we need uh, a receiver. And there's plenty of guys there in that first round, uh, top of that first round that are, will be there. I don't know how it's going to play out to, at number nine. And I think maybe that's the, the might be the deciding point for him is like so let's who's there uh, at nine, and if it's not somebody we really are going to go, then let's trade back and get some picks because we don't have well, a number, we don't have a second round this year. So, well, technically they're already on the roster because that's Montez Sweat. You know, t- you know what right. I mean? Like because we traded for him, which has been great. I mean, it's been great so far. But like you said, we do need another edge. Keith, you made a comment, though, that I want to go back on real quick because I've been debating this with some of the viewers, and I want to hear your guys' reactions in the live chat, is that we obviously went out and got tackled Darnell Wright out of Tennessee last year. Pretty successful as a rookie, you know, made the all-rookie team as a right tackle. We haven't had that in a while. And um, are you saying that you would be okay with the Bears taking alignment and moving on from Braxton Jones, or where do you see improvement? Well, that's interesting you ask. Um, Here's what I would do. May not be a popular thing, but I would move Braxton to right tackle. I'd kick uh, who was our number one again from last year? Darnell Wright. Darnell, sorry, uh, my name. I'm I'm old now, guys. Uh, I'd kick Darnell into guard, not because he didn't do a good job at tackle. I just think he, he would be uh, sort of like Tevin. I think, and you'd have a solid center, you know, um, solid uh, interior. Get yourself a left tackle. Uh, I think that would you know, really improve the line a lot. I, I don't know what we're doing at center. I know we brought a guy in, but we tried that last time and that didn't work very well. So, um, <laughs> but I think that would really be a strong lineup if I don't think they'll do that, but that's what I would do. So, so what you're saying is move uh, Darnell Wright at guard. So that would kick move. Nate Davis out of the lineup. Well, that's true. Uh, kick him to right guard. And then move Braxton to right tackle and draft the left tackle. Now I'm not saying that that's the pick they're going to make. I'm just saying that's that's what I would do. And nothing against Nate. It just that's what I would do. And I'm taking another swig. Hey, well, everyone, let's cheers with uh, with Keith right now. If you got a drink, let's hear it in the live chat because this stuff's pretty good. If you haven't gotten Freshy or Authentico, you guys are definitely going to want to go and get some. That's all. It's I'm a very say. all organic. Everything, no additives. It's all just very smooth. It's good stuff. We have a, a Blanco, uh, a Cristalino, which is our Reposado that has been filtered five times, and it's really smooth. And I'm drinking the Reposado myself, so very tasty. And the same stuff is in your freshie, so. Keith, it sounds like you have something to do with Authentico. It's, you're selling <laughs> it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm um, involved. I'm a, I'm a little involved. I'm a small player, but I'm involved. I, um. No, if you, I mean, I got to meet Tim, as who you've Tim Martin, as you you've met, and uh, Larry Wirt. I hope it's okay. I say his name. Um, yeah, anyway, I know I've known Larry because I used to work at the radio, and um, he's involved. So uh, you know, good good people behind it, and you know, and I like the tequila. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, it's the only thing I really drink now, not because I'm sponsored by them, but it's the only thing that doesn't make me feel hungover and the other, and it's got great taste. Right. My, my nephew is fine. And I have the lime here. Um, he's got, uh, I, I think he has Crohn's. His sister has it bad, but he has it. And he's got to watch what he drinks and freshy lime, freshy. He loves it because he can drink it then and, He's very happy about it because he was trying to find something that he could drink. And and so I'm happy that it, my family's enjoying it as well. So, Hey, you're enjoying it. They're enjoying it. What, <laughs> what more of a world do you want to be in right now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a good world right now. Um, but Keith, we got some people. We got a lot of people saying bear down. A lot of people are also saying it's Friday every day at your household. So I think I need to get invited over there sometime soon. And yeah, there, we got- there's there's an E on horn, by the way, just so people know. Uh, yeah, because if you type in it without the E, it's the basketball player that played for the Nets. It's uh, the Nets, the Phoenix Sun, a couple other teams. Yeah, well, uh, I'm the original. I'm they- the original. <laughs> and I got a funny story about that. My niece, my nep- nephew's sister, she got me a – Keith, the, the basketball player had a bobblehead doll, right? I, I uh-huh. never had a bobblehead doll. So – she for my I think it was 
either my birthday or Christmas. She bought me the bobblehead doll and she took a Sharpie, put an E on the end of horn. And I, and that was my present. And I, it was hilarious. So I have my own bobblehead doll now. It's not me, but it's got my name on it. It's one of one. That's right. right. <laughs> <It is. laughs> and then we also got this one in the house. So fun fact for everybody. This is my first ever Chicago bears autograph. Little did I know I'd actually be talking to Keith, you know, <laughs> 10 years after I got it. So well, not a bobblehead. I don't think this would fit on my head, but no. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, those things are a pain in the ass, honestly, those little helmets to sign. But thank you. I'm honored that you still have it and uh, glad I could be your first. <laughs> <laughs> and, let's keep, uh, Pete, that, don't take it the way. My viewers, don't take it that way, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we got some people uh, saying bear down. Up oh, There we go. <laughs> I thank you. Said, no, no <laughs> apologies needed, but thank you for doing that. Uh, we got all natural, the way to go. And then we got a, from Dr. Dave. Thank you for playing for the bears on what I feel like was an excellent undervalued offensive line. Dr. Do you have any comments Dave. to that one, Keith? You know what? If I don't know if that's the Dr. Dave, I know a Dr. Dave. I don't know if that's him, but uh, if, if it is hey, Dr. Dave, it's been a long time. Um, I, I, I totally agree with that statement. Um, Honest, obviously the defense was awesome and they got all the attention and, uh, you know, I mean, they probably the best defense that ever played, certainly in a top three, if you subjectively, but, um, our offensive line was certainly, uh, undervalued or underestimated and undervalued by, uh, you know, we led the league in rushing four years in a row. That's when they, with everybody knowing exactly what we're going to do, because our offense under Mike Ditko is not very difficult. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we were second, I think, twice and third once, or we were second once and third twice. But in a whole in a seven year span, we did all of that. No one's ever done that in the NFL, and and that's also why I, I can't walk very well now. But that, you know that's part of the deal. And then of course we had Walter Payton, but. But, um, you know, that's uh, that's quite an accomplishment for an offensive line. So I agree with that comment. Thank you for putting it up there, Dr. Dave. And I got one more question for you, Keith, before we go into your draft night experience. Is Ben's Place is asking, when was the last time you watched the tape of the 1985 Super Bowl? Oh, it's been a long time. Um, I've seen snippets on uh, highlights, but I, I haven't watched the whole game in a long time. Um, not that I, not that I wouldn't, uh, I just haven't. Well, maybe, maybe that's a, you know, enjoying authentic home, but it might be something to, <laughs> to do at the Van Horn household tonight. Yeah. It won't happen today, but it may be, maybe, you know, but I think that would be a good way to do it. Just get a bottle of tequila and put the tape on and see how it goes. I know, I know my dad would be like, I, we got to rewatch it right now. Yeah. <laughs> That because because that was his uh because he was the same age as me in uh eighty five. Oh really? So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, so, that's yeah, he, uh, that's, that's great. It was a certainly was a special year. It sure was. And so, Keith, why don't we hit on that real quick? What was your favorite memory from nineteen eighty five that may, some people might not know about? This is just water, kids. Yeah, <laughs> no tequila in there. No, just straight water. All all organic, straight. Everything's organic. Um, eighty five. Well, it would probably start out with um, over in uh, what they call it then the America Bowl, American Bowl, America Bowl, when we played Dallas in London, pre and, you know, before the season even started. That was the first game I think overseas, and. Um, <laughs> I had been there, um, Gary Fenzik and I, and uh, another guy, I, I'm spacing on his name, but he used to run the lotto here in Illinois. He was a friend of Gary's. We know McEnroe, John McEnroe, and he was obviously going to be playing Wimbledon. So we were going over to watch him. And then he dropped out because he got hurt. So we went and we were going to go anyway. And the NFL found out we were going. So they called up and said, look, we'll take care of everything. If you just do some PR for us about this upcoming game, and we said, "Sure," <laughs> so we didn't have to pay for anything, and we only literally did like maybe two, three things that were like press related. That was so simple. We had a uh, they had a uh, like our ho a host hostess or something that showed she took care of us and took us to where we needed to be, so we weren't late. 
and took us, showed us around, you know, London. So we had, we had a lot of fun. And then three weeks later, or however much, I think it was three weeks, three and a half, we, we were back over there for the game. So I could take some of the, some of the guys and show them where I had been. And there was this one favorite place was the rooftop garden in Kensington Gardens. And it looked out, it was literally on the top of a building and it looked out over London. It was, and it had a complete English garden on the roof with geese and everything. It was wild. So we, we hit that out quite a few times, but uh, that was a great time. Um, and then I, you know, it, it, during the season, you know, beating Dallas 44 to nothing is just, you know, you can't <laughs> really, that's a hard one to, to overlook. That was a lot of fun. And I know Mike did get, you know, th thoroughly enjoyed it as well. So um, that was good. Those are a couple. I mean, there's plenty of other things, but I'm not, can't tell you all of them. Some of them I can't tell you at all, but uh, um, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to pry out of that one. That's, no, that's no. After, but that's after a couple more drinks of Authentico, right? Yeah. So you know, and, and the seat, the deep, because the first six games, I think we had to come from behind to win, um, and then the, you know, then it started rolling. So uh, you know, it was a it was a special year, and. and you know, unfortunately, we didn't go back. We should have should have been back there a couple of times, but uh, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm with you. I'm with it. My my dad would my dad always tells me '86 you guys should have won, and then yeah. I believe it was '88 you guys should have won. Yeah, we um, well, you know, and I'm, I'll say this: without McMahon, we weren't going to win. Um, you know, our backups did a admirable job but they just weren't jim mcmahon and whatever you think of jim mcmahon you know he 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 was a winner he knew football he and he just went out and he won games and if he would have been healthy i i'm pretty confident we would have gone back and won a couple more but uh that wasn't to be so <laughs> Well, you got one, you got the ring, you and you can Yeah, I did I did put it on. I did somewhere in the kitchen somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I, listen, I would put that away. <laughs> well, no, it's it's yeah. It's got a little it's in a safe, so. Oh, okay. There you go. There, that's cool. I I have a replica version of it and I think it's so cool. It's the exact replica. I don't have it with me either. It's in the bedroom in yeah. the safe. <laughs> it's cuz even though it's not real, I think it's so cool. So yeah, that's all right. That's maybe a, yeah. next time you'll have to bring it on. If you uh, compare them to today's suit, the rings they get. I mean, I mean, it's a, still a, a beautiful ring. Don't get me wrong. And I, quite frankly, I think it's even nicer because it's not as big and gaudy as those other ones are. But nowadays they just they're huge. I'm a friend of mine I grew up with is a strength conditioning coach for Steelers, so he's won a couple of them. And he was wearing uh, the last one they got. It, I mean, it, it was because they've got, what? how many do they have now? Six? Six, yep. So I think it had six things with one big diamond in the middle. You know, it's it was impressive, but it's it was so big. I mean, literally, it was like covering two fingers. So kind of uh, over the top, but I guess why not, right? If it's covering two of your fingers, it would cover my whole hand probably. Yeah, it's big. It's big. So. <laughs> That's how they stay in such good shape because they, they do some bicep curls with it and they do everything else. But hopefully the Bears will have one of those very, very soon. Yeah. Well, I you know, I think we're if they let this guy do his job and if he does his job, right, which like I said, I think he's done pretty well so far. Um, and uses the draft and sign and you know, you pick up some free agencies. I think we'll we're on our way. So um and of course, you got to stay healthy. You got to stay healthy. That's the key. And Keith, one more quick question. I know that we've been going, trying to go to your draft night because that's why we're here. But I think this is a really good question that a lot of people would love to hear about. But do you have any good stories that you would like to share about Walter Payton that people might not know about? Um, <laughs> There's a well, smile on your face. So <laughs> I've got stories, but I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll just tell you. This is all I'll say. Walter, you know, he was a jokester and he'd get anybody. So, but, uh, and Jimbo could back this up. You knew when he did a good job, he never said anything 
to you on the field. Okay. But if you if he gave you the stare, you screwed up. If he patted you on your ass, you did a great job. So you hoped you got more pats than stares um, because you did not want to let Walter down. So that was uh, that was Walter. Well, you guys clearly were a huge part of his success, even though he, I mean, he definitely was arguably one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Um, I think he is the greatest of all time still for what he did and how he did it. But you guys were a huge part of that for him. So I'm sure there was more pats than stairs, I hope. Well, I hope so too. But yeah, he was special. He was uh he was a special one. He I mean, I agree with what you said. I think he was all, the all best all around back uh that's ever played. I mean, you know, you could throw Jim Brown in there too, but um I think Walter could do everything and he did everything well. And he did everything with, you know, intensity. And um, it was an honor to play with him, an honor to play for him and with him. Well, may, next time when you and I have some Authentico, we'll definitely have to uh, hear some of more of these stories that <laughs> we're keeping PG for this episode. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, Keith, we got – so, obviously, you were drafted in the first round when you were picked by the Chicago Bears. You were the 11th overall pick. And it, you came out of USC, which it sounds like the guy that we're taking at number one, Caleb Williams, who also went to USC, will be another first rounder for the Bears. What was your draft night experience like? Were you there in person? Can you kind of run through it for the fans so they know what it's like from a player's perspective? Well, it's this is going to be a letdown for all of you because they didn't have the, um, you know, the big show with, for the draft back then. Um, they probably might have had the first couple of guys out there, but I, I was in LA in my apartment, you know, so that was it. I didn't have a party or anything. I was just by myself and waiting for the phone to ring and got a call from Chicago and, and my, uh, they said, well, what's it going to be like to be coming home? And I said, I've never lived in Chicago. What are you talking about? So my parents, and here's the backstory of that my mom and dad and my sister were living here at the time. Um, I was born in, in Pittsburgh. My brother and I were born in Pittsburgh. My dad worked, he was, my dad's a Chicago guy. So he was born and raised in Chicago. He met my mom. He served in World War II out of the Great Lakes Naval Station. Uh, worked for Ryerson Steel for like 35 years. So he, and he met my mom on a blind date at the old Tip Top Tap in the old Allerton Hotel. So they got married in Chicago. He got transferred to Pittsburgh. My brother and I were born there. He got transferred to L.A. My sister was born out there. And then we were raised out in Southern California. And my brother was in college. I was graduating high school. And I think my sister uh, was just finishing up her freshman year. And so my dad took my brother and I for a ride. And he said, well, boys, I got, uh, I've been transferred to Chicago. And didn't really affect my brother because he was already in school. He was on a baseball scholarship at Arizona. And uh, so it, it more was related to me, but um, I, you know, I went on my visits and I ended up going to SC. So they loaded up the car with their stuff, my stuff, drove me to SC, helped me move in, and then they drove cross country to Chicago. And so when I got, so they were here when I got drafted, and that's what you know the Bears, which <laughs> reflects on them a little bit, is that they thought that I'd lived there, you know. So I was like, well, no, never lived there, but it was a wonderful thing to be able to because i hadn't seen my family maybe saw them uh, i got red shirted so i was in school five years so i mean i saw them maybe five times that whole five years so um you know because during the christmas hot break we were mostly usually in a bowl so we were practicing so i wasn't still at school and summer i'd have a job so i was staying in la and anyway um but yeah i would that was it was a very it was just me in my apartment, the phone rang, got told, and that was it, you know? So a whole different experience than they do nowadays. I lost you, Nick. Ah, I was on oh, mute. there you are. Sorry. There I am. Okay. There I am. Sorry. It's, That's right. pretty, it's pretty, I mean, it's crazy how it's changed, but still, were you able to at least, like, did you know the call was coming or were you just sitting there? Like I could get chosen at a hundred. I can get chosen at one. Yeah. Like what were no, you thinking? I mean, you know, I had an idea, I guess, but I had no, I just was waiting for a call just in my apartment. And, uh, 
I didn't know what, you know, who or what or when, but uh, yeah, that, that was it. Phone rang and it was the bears. Were you, were you hoping that it was someone else or did, did you want to come to Chicago? Um, I mean, in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> weather, I would, you know, San Diego would have been great, but uh, you know, their ownership's even worse than the bears ownership. So, <laughs> um, they, uh, but no, Chicago, the fact that I, first off, my family was here and my dad being a born raised here. So that was wonderful. And also the history of, of the bears being the, you know, founding team of the, of the NFL. So, um, and then having Walter Payton was there, you know, I blocked for two Heisman trophy winners in college. I got Charlie white and Mark Allen. So, um, you know, then I, then you get the block from Walter Payton. I mean, you know, as offensive lineman, you can't really ask for more than that. So that's awesome. I mean, what a what a what a group of guys that you've worked with during your time playing football. I mean, that's super impressive, and I'm sure they're all very grateful that you were defending them, and it wasn't the other way around. Because well, I don't know. I hope so, but we had a good. Uh, you know, our line we we were together as a unit for probably those at least those seven years that, that were, we talked about earlier, which that doesn't happen much anymore. Um, so that, you know, that was a unique thing to be able to, and you can really co cohesive as a team, uh, you know, as a unit and, and uh, to be able to play together and cause everybody has to do their thing. It all works. It's all works together. So it was, uh, and we had a, a good, real good coach in Dick Stanfield. So we were lucky. What was it? What was it like having Mike Dick as your head coach? If uh, I'm sure people have an idea, of, I saw you already start chuckling. But what was it like having Dick uh, as your head coach? Sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, Mike Ditka. Well, he and I had quite a, you know, we weren't really fans of each other to say okay. the least. But he, he you have to. First off, we need to address Jim Finks was the GM when I got drafted. He's had a huge hand in building that team, this, you know, the foundation of that team. And then when he left and Mike got hired and Jerry Venisi was the general manager, they then kind of finished off that by the, with their drafts. Um, when was he? 80. I'm trying to think when Finks left, if he left in 81 or 82. But, we, you know, 82, we got McMahon. Um, I don't know who else we had in 82, 83, I think it was Jimbo and Willie and Bortz. And so Jerry, Venisi and Dick, Mike Ditka, you know, got the finishing pieces for that team. And Mike came in and, you know, he's a, he's a hard ass. And he expected, you know, if you didn't follow the, follow his uh, program, then you were out of there. So he got rid of some, some excess weight and, uh, came in and, you know, and worked your, you know, it was, it was hard. He, he worked us and, uh, and he said, we're going to get, get to the Super Bowl. And he did, he got us to the Super Bowl and we won it. And so he deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, uh, then post Super Bowl, he also deserves some blame for us not going back. So, um, <laughs> you know, but we, we can get into that, but he was the right guy, I guess, for the time. Um, but we needed somebody to come in and, and, you know, set a standard and, and, and he did. And, uh, and that's, that's what got us to the Super Bowl. What I find so funny, um, you know, reading up on, you know, the 85 team and the interviews I've watched and, you know, sitting here talking with you and Jimbo and a couple of the other guys, I feel like Dicka didn't get along with anybody. <laughs> well, he's not, he's, he's not a real personal guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know he can be, you know, when he wants to be, but, uh, yeah, he's a tough one to, uh, get to know and to, you know, get close to. He's, uh, you know, I, I don't, I can't tell you why, but, uh, he just is, but, um, you know, he's, uh, he's Mike Ditka. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you say to him? He's Mike Ditka. <laughs> yeah, he's Mike Ditka. Hell of a player when he played, um, Oh yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he was a hell of a coach, but I would say he was a hell of a player. 
he uh, he was a hell of a coach initially with us with us. Uh, post Super yeah, yeah. Bowl, things changed, and that's a whole. Well, we could talk about that if you want, but um, <laughs> you know. So there you go. No, I pr- I appreciate you getting it a little bit more in depth about it because you know you hear so many different people's perspectives, and you know everyone's got their own side of the story. But it's cool yeah. to hear it from you because the media. You know, those media guys, they'll just, they'll spin it in any way they want. Not yeah, me though. They I got, sure they've got tape now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think McMahon came up with Sybil. We used to call him Sybil because he had so many different personalities. It was like, which, what are we going to get today? You know, I mean, he, he was in, <laughs> he would come in in the morning and have a, we'd have a team meeting. And I mean, he literally could be in the greatest mood and in a, it would just turn and you have no idea why. And he would just be frothing at the mouth and going off. And you, you just, <laughs> so Sybil was a very appropriate nickname for him. With a cigar in his mouth, right? Or is that uh, just a joke? <laughs> uh, well, no, he, he did have cigars a lot. Not, not always in the me- morning meeting, but he did. He'd certainly smoke them in his uh, golf cart watching practice. So, um, <laughs> But he's the head coach. He's, he, he can do what he wants. That's right. And what what do you think about Eberflus, Keith? If I may ask, um, I you know I don't know much about him, but I I think he did a really good job with the defense last year in terms of turning it around. Um, I mean, but then you also have to question a couple. You know, the defensive coordinator they hired last year they had to get rid of because of whatever the hell he was doing, and somebody else, who else they had to get rid of somebody else, right? But um, last year they got rid of Getzy and they got rid of Alan Williams. Yeah, and guess so you you're going well. If you hired these guys, then how do I, you know, what do I, why do I should I trust your judgment? But um, he did do a real good job with getting that defense turned around, and uh, and you know our offense we need we need players, you know, and uh, um, Justin Fields. I'm I think it's the best thing for Justin to get a fresh start somewhere else. He handled himself uh, incredibly well. Uh, all that's a pressure job when you play quarterback in Chicago and, and uh, he handled himself really well and, and uh, commendably. And, and he's a great athlete and he, you know, I, I, I can't, there's nothing bad I can say about him as a person. I don't know him, but just how he kept carried himself. But I think in the long run, it's better for him and um, being able to, you know, learn under Russell Wilson for a few years, maybe that'll benefit him as well. And and he's in Pittsburgh, which is a great, another great town to play football in. So I wish him the, all the best, but I think, it, I think it was the right move. So this sounds like a great opportunity to talk about your first pick in the 2024 NFL draft. You have number one Keith. <laughs> Do you know who you're taking? Um, I don't, but I mean, I, I'm going to go with uh, I got to go with my Trojan. You know, let's we need a quarterback, so um, let's let's go with Caleb. Although, you know, I my only concern there is, you know, I want to see him be a he can make all the plays out of the pocket, but I want to see him play in the pocket. We got to give him a line so that he can do that. But and, and I mean, I think he can. He's shown certainly shown that he can, but. That's what you want. You don't want, like with Justin, you know, we lead the league in rushing, but our quarterback's the leading rusher. That is not how you run a, a team. So um, I, I just tell, if, if we get him in here and they get him the protection he needs uh, and the, and the uh, receivers, which they've, you know, certainly added on, uh, then he can stay in the pocket and, and, and make plays there. But I think he's got all the tools. And, uh, you know, again, Coming to Chicago to be a quarterback, that's a, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I mean, it's been far and few between. So um, I wish him well. But I think that's who I would go for, and that's who I think they're going to go for. But, you know, they, they could throw us the wrench in there. I don't know your opinion on the on those top quarterbacks um, who, who they might also be thinking about. I don't know if the guy from LSU or um, – I don't know, North Carolina State? Is it North Carolina State or North Carolina? It's just North Carolina. Where yeah, I think there's a bad taste from that, <laughs> from, uh, from a pick back a few years ago, uh, which was 
one of the stupidest things that was ever done ever. I mean, draft. Oh. Well, to draft up one position and then you pick a guy who has no, really, a very limited, you know, experience in college. Right. Even. So he, yeah. I mean, like with with Trubisky, my thing was is that he was he was literally thrown out for the wolves. Mike Glennon wasn't the answer. We should have never given him forty five no. million dollars. <laughs> no. That was like, uh, yeah. I actually delivered pizza to Mike Glennon when I worked at a restaurant in high school and pulling up to his house on the door, it said, please do not ring the door because oh he did not want to be seen. And I showed up and I was just curious. I was like, it says Glennon on it. It's got to be Mike Glennon. So I knocked and he opened the door and he goes, did you not read the note? It, you, and it took everything in me to say, did you not read the defense last week? <laughs> well, you, you should have said, it said, don't ring. I knocked. <laughs> there you go. So, I, I, but I was I, I was like, hey, man, big Bears fan, you know, hope it all yeah, works out. Well, and he was, he was very honest. He was like, yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Mike, they, he should be praying. Thanking God every day because he made a whole lot of money to do nothing. But yep. you know, yeah. But uh, and Mitch, you know, Mitch, you're right. He he was thrown in the fire, but I just think that was a bad the wrong pick. And the, you don't trade, you know, nobody else was gonna pick him, you know, at number <laughs> two or three. So anyway, that's in the past. So uh let's, hopefully uh, we we get it right this time and uh, we get him the the tools he needs to be successful. Yeah, and before we get into the next pick, and I got a really good question that I want to put up on the screen. Everyone, please make sure you hit the like button on the video right now so more Bears fans have the chance to see this interview with Keith Van Horn. Keith was very nice to come on. And Keith, obviously, we hope to have you on again, but we got some more questions for you that I, th yeah. I mean, this has definitely been very awesome. And you can see the, the Black and Blues brothers up, Black and Bruce brothers up behind me. Uh, we got a lot of people commenting that right now. Let's see. I'm going to go back real quick. Um, a lot of, yep, right here. Someone, Freebird. I had that same poster yeah. back in the day. Bear it out. I mean, I've, I've got to go a little bit farther up, but it's. No, that's all right. I got the and money. I got if poster you, too. If you look at it, I'm, I got the, I got the briefcase full of the money. <laughs> there you go. And all yeah well that's all the answers to all the bears problems right you took that with when you left the team <laughs> yeah brief, well brief, briefcase full of blues i guess if you were to be official but uh i say the money but so, yeah there was nothing in it unfortunately but, um we had a really good i mean that that in itself says a lot about the team and and how you know offensive linemen don't get get posters and stuff so you know that was uh that was a lot of fun for us um, and you're, are you wearing, everyone's wearing a fedora, right? Yeah, that, I got the, there's, I'm that to me with the suitcase handcuffed to my wrist. <laughs> you can't, there. Well, there it is. Yep, that yep. That's the suitcase or the briefcase. Sorry. Briefcase. It's a national treasure now. We got to go <laughs> find it. <laughs> But Keith, we got a question from Joseph R. Um, asking you, is there any way we can talk you back into coming to teach these guys for one year on the offensive line how to protect a quarterback? <laughs> oh, boy. I, you know what? The, the Bears are not too uh, welcoming to their their uh, alumni in terms of that uh, doing things like that. And I, I couldn't tell you why. Um, uh, I remember one time they had they brought Anthony Munoz in, who is would be the, you know one of the first guys you would call to teach you about it because probably the best left tackles ever played, certainly one of the best. Um, and then we had one too in Jimbo. So, but you know they brought a guy from Cincinnati Bengals in to, to, for the training camp, not somebody from the Bears. So it's you know I don't understand that, but I you know I can't I can't tell you anything about the McCaskies thinking it's. It's uh, it's befuddling and, and <laughs> mind blowing sometimes the things they have done. Well, it's funny because we had a couple people actually asking, and I'm going to see if I can find that comment real quick. Uh, oh, Joseph R actually asked it after the Super Bowl season. When did you figure out that the team was being taken apart by the owners? Did you feel that way? Well, when they didn't sign Wilbur um, and Todd. Um, and and Mike McCaskey had come in, right? He was taking he had taken over the team 
which is just the lucky sperm club because the guy knew had no business running a football team. <laughs> but he I'm was the old, that one. There he, was the, he was the oldest son, right? So that's how that works. But he had made the comment, "We're going to take care of the of the vet, you know, the players that have proven themselves, and then and then anybody else is going to have to you know prove themselves before we can take care of them." And he did the complete opposite. You know, we didn't sign Wilbur. And Todd, I know Todd and Al Harris got held out. You know, and it's like, well, then follow through with what you said, you know. But they didn't and got rid of Wilbur or Trey, you know, they, which was a mistake. But, I mean, the defense, as though somebody pointed out in 80, 88, 86, um, the defense was actually statistically better, I think, than they were in 85. But, um but still, those were two great players that we had. And uh, they got, you know, then McMahon, they just, McCaskey wanted to get rid of McMahon just because he thought he was a pain in the ass, which he probably <laughs> was. But he, he, that was, you know, that was a mistake too, in my opinion. But they brought in, then they bring in Flutie, who, God bless him, the guy's had a, had a great career, but he, he got thrown in too. Be, be, he, I mean, he just gotten here. So he really didn't know our offense and they threw him in and he, he did, you know, didn't really know what was calling the right place and stuff. And but um, then he got you. Know, but then he lit us up when we went up to New England. When he was up in New England, well, I don't know if it was the next year or what. But you know, so he, he had a great career. But just uh, the, some of those decisions were, you know, just like then it's it, it shows you that it was not about winning Super Bowls. It was about you know the bottom line and all that and it's like the so yeah frustrating yeah i think like you, you agree <laughs> yeah it's very frustrating as you can't do anything about it as a player but uh, you know we still should have won but again i uh, if we had mcmahon a healthy jim mcmahon we would have I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that but uh you know he had some people say oh he's always hurt but i mean he had a you saw charles martin did to him again green bay uh, he had a lacerated kidney one time. I mean, the, these injuries he had were like serious injuries. They weren't, you know, he wasn't like trying to avoid con playing or anything. So, um, but he wasn't that big of a guy either. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, he, he was hurt and, and we didn't have, him. but anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent there. Sorry. No, no. And this is great because I asked Jimbo the same question where you, you were on the field when he got that dirty hit uh, against. Green yeah. Bay. I saw it after, uh, right when it was happening, I was over off to the right and, uh, I started making my way over there, but somebody I think, grabbed us and yeah, they, they should have kicked him out of the league. Uh, yeah. And they should have also done something serious to green Bay, the team, especially the head coach, because they were, if you remember, they had towels with numbers on them. Those were like hits. They had bounties on guys, and they had their numbers on their towels. I mean, was, first off, it's classless. You know, that's the first thing. And second off, dirty. And third, that's the only way they could compete with us is by trying to knock guys out of the game So and playing dirty. So I don't know what Forrest, what's his name, Forrest Greg, they should have Something should have happened to Forrest Gregg, too, but it didn't. So, um, but unfortunately, yeah, you know, that was a terrible, totally yeah. destroyed his shoulder. So, and, and his head, too. <laughs> yeah, well, as we've learned, but yeah, I think we're all probably going to, anybody who played some football is going to deal with that at some point. I don't know to what degree, but unfortunately. Well, you're doing great, Keith. <laughs> uh, what's my name? What's it? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm I'm getting warmed up too. I'm telling you. There you go. Well, <laughs> here's a, here, here, and freshy authentico, same. Freshy authentico, freshy, freshy. There you go. Yep. And so we got a really good question here. Uh, Dubsy asked it. What is your Mount Rushmore of offensive linemen? I mean, a whole line. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. If you can, th if you can, if you can. Well. Besides Jimbo, I'd pick Anthony Munoz at left tackle. Probably Jackie Slater at right tackle. Um, guards. Whew, that's a good one. Um, 
besides Jay at center, I'd probably pick one of the Steelers centers. They're Dermani Dawson or, or Webster or um, those are two that come to mind. I know there's other guys, but it's – and guards, I'd have to – I'm trying to think guards. Huh. I don't know. I'd have to think about that a little more. But uh, that's that's three out of five. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> well, we can throw any, you in there, Any right? suggestions from your listeners would be uh, gladly accepted. Well, we got Olin Krutz from William. Olin, yeah, but I would take I would take Hilgi over Olin just because I played with Hilgi. But you know, if I, ha- I can't pick Jay, Olin is a good pick. I don't I don't know why I didn't even think of that, but that's a good suggestion. Yeah. There you go. And by the way, uh, Freebird said Forrest Gregg was a douchebag. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's still alive, but if he is, and if I ever see him, I'm going to pop him one right in the face. Oh, save it. Save it. Everyone save it. <laughs> yeah, I will. There you and, go. I'm an old, I'm a, and I'm an old man now, too. So <laughs> it'll be it'll be a fair fight then, right? <laughs> yeah. There Hopefully it wouldn't be a fight. It would be one punch, and that would be it. That's a, That would be the point. As long as I'm not on the receiving end, Keith, I would love to watch it. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, so, Keith, uh, another question for you. So we talked about it a little bit today, uh, the ninth pick. So the Bears do have holes to fill. They can trade back the number nine if they want. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some options, and you can obviously go against any of them. Um, but, you know, you talked about protecting Caleb Williams at with the second with the ninth overall pick. A lot of people are saying that Joe Alt out of Notre Dame, I know obviously that's not the school you want him to be at, but no, but he might be a, available. He's a he's a good tackle. You know, he's going to get picks probably sooner than nine, but he might be there. You know, what and and, and I uh, know that I know that the the Bears like local products too. You know, so um, yep, so exactly. That might be if he's there. That might be a pick. And then there's another guy. Well, so would you go with an offensive tackle if available at this position, or what would you do? Yeah, well. Okay, I'm going to assume these guys we got signed off season for center are going to take care of center. I don't, I don't yep. know, but it can't be much worse than it was than it was last year. So um, we need, you know, that it's it's going to be tough because it's whoever's going to fall to nine because it'd be hard to pass up on a a wide receiver of, of the quality that's out there. I don't know that those guys will be at number nine. I think there's like three or four that are, you know, top receivers. Um, Ed, and there's at least three or four edge rushers too. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. He may – they may go defense because they've been doing so much on offense, um, which would – you know, that makes sense to me too. I don't know that they'll pick a tackle. I think we need one, but I think it would be either the – the rush man, uh, edge rusher or a wide receiver. Um, uh, and then having said that, I wouldn't be surprised if they traded down either. If, if they didn't like who was like, there wasn't a guy that said we got to have them at nine. So. I'm a big fan of, so this isn't having to deal with number nine, but if we do go with an edge, which I would love for the bears to do, cause there's some good guys this year yeah. draft at the edge position. Uh, at 75, I would love it if he's available for the Bears to go out and get the wide receiver then and get Brendan Rice out of USC. Uh, Jerry Rice's son that Kale Williams has been yeah, going to. Oh, like, he, is he, uh, oh, he's in the draft. Okay. Cause I thought, isn't he underclassman? But I know you can. Uh, he I did don't know declare. If he was a senior. Okay. He did declare, though. Yeah. And that's possible. I mean, you know, that's actually not a bad thing. Pick yourself if, if there's an edge rusher you want. And then pick up a receiver later um, if you can. But again, this guy, you know, they may trade down. Again, it just depends on who's left at number nine. Um, and if they don't think it's like, you know, we want to get more value out of it than that, even they'll trade and, and then, you know, maybe get a, obviously get a first round pick and a second round pick at least, I would assume at least. So um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. You know, they, they keep it close to their, their chest. So, uh, and that's what you have to do now because everybody tries to figure everything out. 
Of course. I mean, hey, that's what I'm trying to do every single day on this yeah, channel. Right. <laughs> uh, but Keith, uh, before I, I, you know, the fourth pick, we'll kind of just, I think it's kind of a, just a toss up of what they're going to do, kind of what's available. They could move it, they could trade it up, whatever. Uh, but I want to go back to the comment section because we've had over 150 people tuned in almost the entire time of this show. Um, so a lot of people are saying thank you so much for coming on. And we actually have a really cool comment that I want to throw up on the screen. So um, from RFK Senior Fan, um, <laughs> Keith used to come in when I bartended at Half Day Inn in the 90s. Uh, would tell me it took him 15 minutes every night to pull the pills around his body to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. And yes, the half day in, I miss it. We miss the uh, miss the half day in, but yeah, yeah, it's I got pillows all around me now. I can't sleep without them. You know, in between my knees and my uh, my arms, it's just it's uh about it was about 15 years post retirement maybe when. Uh, Things start really happening. You know, you're sore and stuff, but then uh, really everything kicks in. And payback is a, is a motherfucker, as they say. <laughs> I can say that on podcast, can I? Or is this a sponsored it's, it's by... Happy right, it's happy good. hour. It's happy hour. No kids on this show. This so, so YouTube actually asked me, is this kid appropriate or not? And the only one that I put, no, it's not, is happy hour. Because oh, obviously... Well, that was smart. Well, we're drinking a little bit. Well, I didn't ask you know. that in advance, but I think I'm glad that uh, we're good. No, no. It, hey, listen, anytime. We're we're also from Chicago. We, I think swearing, <laughs> you start swearing when you're like three or four years old. Uh, <laughs> I know that I did. And my dad's watching right now. And definitely there was times that if it was socially acceptable, I would have gotten a bar of soap in my mouth. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I love how you say Chicago. You are definitely a Chicago guy. And, Chicago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every, it, it's so funny because when I went to school, everyone was like, say Chicago. I'm like, <laughs> Chicago. And they're like, there it is right there. I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? That's how you say it. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, it's, man. A, it's a great city. It's a great city. Uh, one of the best in the world. And it's it's great that you played for the Fran. I know that we're coming up on time here, Keith. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I got a few minutes. Good. We're good. I, I appreciate that, though. Thank you. So yeah. everyone, throw some more uh, comments in the chat right now. Any questions for Keith, we'll throw it on the screen because I have one for him right now that is completely not irrelevant or not relevant to the draft, but just his time with the Bears. So, so Keith, you've obviously played with a lot of different players over, over throughout. You said Walter was a jokester. Who was your favorite teammate during your time with the Chicago Bears? <laughs> oh, that's good. Well. Jay Ogenberg and I roomed together on the road, or so he and I were really good friends. So Jay would Jay would be one. Uh, McMahon and Kurt Becker, those guys were crazy. They were a lot of fun. Um, you know, I'd have to say them. Steve McMichael, great teammate. Um, you know, God bless him. Um, you know, he he's uh, who he, he is. What he you know. You want you'd want him on your team no matter what, Steve, because he's he's all about the team. Um, so the, you know those are the guys off the top of my head. Um, Kenny Mardrum, who played receiver for us, he was uh, he played at Stanford, so uh, he was one. Um, Butler, you know, we used to hang out, but we used to let we used to let Kevin Butler hang out with us because he was a kicker. But you know, okay, <laughs> you can stay. But he was fun. But yeah, we had a lot of. I mean, it, that team was just a lot of good people and characters. Um, and it was a different time. You, you will, you're not going to see that ever again. You know, a team like that, and in terms of the, the makeup of the team um, and and the characters, uh, it just the guys don't stay on. They aren't on the teams long enough because of free agency, or they're just uh, actually like. Because after games at the at Old Soldier Field, I need I need a swig. Um, <laughs> there you go. We would, and then particularly when we started winning, but oh, I got a story about that too. So we would all tailgate in the uh, parking lot. We'd all park underneath the uh, north end of the stadium, in the old stadium. And so I mean, everybody. I mean, not everybody, but quite a few, a large majority people would tailgate afterwards, you know, they had their families down there and we'd all just be down there for like a good hour or two after the game 
partying, you know, with just, just families and teammates. And that I asked, uh, who did I ask? I think it was Tony Medlin, the, the um, head equipment guy. Tony's a great guy. I said, tell you, these guys hang out with each other after games, Raymond? And, and of course, it's a new state, you know, the stadium's different, but he goes, no, they just leave immediately after the game. So you go, well, you know, that makes a difference. But here's, let me take a swig. Yeah, let's cheers, guys. Cheers to Keith coming on and telling these great stories. Oh, to telling these great stories about the Bears. So thank you for sharing. Freshly, with me. I got one more, yeah. one more quick one. There you go. Let's so when I it. first got to the, to the team, right? 81 and you know we weren't weren't winning so the tunnel you we came out from old soldier fields same basically the same tunnel they have now but um you know i remember dan neal who was our center then he was a veteran and he said keep your helmet on when you go off the field and this is at home right so we off and sure enough the bear there's our phone fans are dumping beers on their heads throwing their beer cups you know, yelling at us, you guys stink, da, 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 which, you know, we did, but, you know, so, so they, they kept doing that. So then the, I would imagine it would have been a park district because they run the thing, but so they put a uh, canvas tarp over the tunnel so that it would block things getting thrown at us, right? They lit it on fire so they could burn it and then throw stuff at us. I remember running under it while it was on fire. And so they then put a metal cover over it. So then you would just hear things bouncing off, but they couldn't get you. Then we started winning and then they took it down and then they never threw stuff at us again. So, I mean, but that, that's a true story. It's like, wow, I'm in the end. These guys are serious, but uh, you know, that's a Chicago bear fan. And win. was they that, you, did Walter do the win. same too? Did Walter put his helmet on too when he ran through? Yeah, well, nobody would touch Walter. You know, he, 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 Walter always played well. <laughs> so that's very fair. <laughs> they didn't, they wouldn't throw it at him. It was the rest of us. But, uh, yeah, they, that was, uh, quite an experience. Oh, man. It, the, everyone's starting to laugh in the live chat right now, by the way. People are saying the good old days. Yeah, the good old days. <laughs> and then, the, uh, you know, you ask memories. I, I don't know why it's based on this one. The fog bowl. I mean, that was something. Um, just an amazing, it, it was literally like the movie, the fog. It was came rolling in over the South end zone coming into the field and just filled it up. I mean, I, you couldn't see t probably 10 yards. I mean, you'd hear the play, but you couldn't see anything happening. Um, so that was kind of a trip, but I was a little bummed out cause I was playing against Reggie white and I had a really good game and it was a playoffs but nobody could see it because <laughs> it was fog. It was like, okay. But uh, that was the trip, the fog, the fog ball. I still have my feet are still numb from playing the Packers at home. And what was it? 83, I think maybe. And it was 15 or 20 below zero. Uh, and we had AstroTurf then, right? The And when I say AstroTurf, it's a block of cement with that, shit on top of it so it's not like anything today um but my feet are were numb for about a month after that gray and numb uh, and i had vaseline and plastic bags extra socks i had it didn't matter and they're still to this day i can't feel them so um yeah good old days <laughs> good. well a lot I've, yeah we got some people laughing right <laughs> they you know it it, it it is crazy how much the game has changed. And that actually was a question was what was it like playing on that AstroTurf? Was it, was it, nope, just a big it no. Was, <laughs> it was basically playing on concrete. I mean, that's really what it was. I mean, it, there was no, there was no cushion, no bounce. It was concrete with just a layer of that Monsanto fake grass. Uh, and that stuff would burn your skin right off if you landed on it. Um, there was no, no give in it at all. Cause it was just solid. And it would freeze. Concrete freezes. You know, yep. when you go over a bridge in the winter, they say, be careful. The, the bridge is the first thing to freeze. So yeah, that's what you were playing on. It was uh, terrible to, on your body. Um, and I'm glad that they got rid of it finally. I think every, in my opinion, and is that, and I think that it'd be possible nowadays, is that every stadium should be grass. It should be natural turf. And I think you can do that nowadays. Um, so... I would love to see them 
go that way. Don't know if they ever will, but uh, and I know I know for sure that the, even the current players are fav would favor that as well. So um, that would be playing on. There's nothing like playing on grass. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I, I, I told you I played high school football for a little bit. And before we, I got to high school, we played on grass. Second, we got to turf. It's it's not the same. No. Natural not grass all. all day. It's not. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I stuck with baseball because we were well, You were smart. Life. You were smart. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't hit the curveball. My brother was the baseball player. So uh, I, I ended up going to football and basketball and wasn't quite good enough in basketball. So. But I got to I got to come to Chicago and play with the Chicago Bears. So, and we won one Super Bowl, huh? Here's to that. And, and I'll cheers to that. And Keith, Keith, I know you got to go. It's four thirty, but I do want to throw this up on the screen from Foster. Keith, he said, Keith, we love you and thank you for twelve seasons of your blood, sweat, and tears from real Chicago Bears fans. Your career was underrated, <laughs> <laughs> except for well, hey, Foster. Foster covers. I love it. Thank you. It was actually thirteen seasons, but. I, I agree. I think my career was underrated too, but you know, that's just my opinion. And I appreciate you saying that. So, and you didn't throw yourself on the Mount Rushmore. I was a little shocked by that. Do, I didn't what? You didn't put yourself on the offensive line of Mount Rushmore. No, no, no. I, I there's, I, Jimbo could be up there, but uh, you know what? I wasn't a great player. I was, but I was pretty damn good. And uh, I didn't even, I didn't get that credit, but um, you know what? It's, it's, you play for your teammates. And you play for the fans. And um, so that's, you know what? I had a great career. I got to play with some, in a great city, got to play with some great players. And um, and when at least we won one Super Bowl. So not bad. Absolutely. Not bad. Not bad. Well, and, thanks, and we Nick, got, I really appreciate it. And we got Joseph R. saying Keith Van Horn <laughs> for president. So, you know what? I might be better than the two Yahoos that are out there now, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can't be much worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I agree. I agree. <laughs> well, Keith, thanks for coming on. We got a couple bears down and enjoy the rest of your weekend. We would love to have you on after the draft to catch you up, but everyone loved having you on. Yeah. And I really appreciate you taking the Thank time. Thank you, Nick. And good, uh, you know, best, best of luck or with the draft party that you got coming up. That yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll tell you about it after when we have you on the show after the party. Yeah, so say hi to Tim for me and, and have a few of those freshies. <laughs> oh, I, I, right now? Because I'm going to go have another couple. You right can now. have as I'll... many as you want. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keith, you have a good night, all right? Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. Thanks to your, your audience, too. Take Absolutely. care. Absolutely. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Dick Brody. Join alongside Keith Van Horn, and we'll see you guys next time. Go Bears! <laughs>